Hey everyone, happy Friday to all of you. What a week it has already been and we've still got some news to make today. Welcome to Up to Speed. First, our teams continued to keep communities connected in the aftermath of Hurricane Sally. As we heard from Wendy Gisetta earlier in the week, our response teams are on the ground working alongside our network teams to support first responders and the impacted communities. For the latest update on our relief efforts, here's Kate J. As our teams continue to work tirelessly to support the impacted areas, today we are announcing $300,000 in donations to support immediate relief efforts in the communities in California, Oregon, and Washington impacted by the wildfires, as well as those in Alabama and Florida impacted by Hurricane Sally. In the West, $200,000 will go to the American Red Cross to support fire relief. And in the South, $100,000 will go to Feeding the Gulf Coast to support their emergency response efforts following Sally. 2020 has been a challenging year, and these donations are just one part of our ongoing commitment to ensure that our customers and communities can stay connected when it matters most. Thanks, Kate. And for the latest updates on our relief efforts, including free call, text, and data offers for customers, visit our newsroom. You've probably already marked it today on your calendar if you're on the hunt for a new device. Lots of good news to share, starting with the Apple Watch Series 6. Verizon has announced that the LTE plan to connect smartwatches, including the new Apple Watch, has been lowered to just $10 per month. We also debuted Unlimited Plus, a new plan for laptops, hotspots, and tablets that gives you more connection options on the go or as a backup at home. And the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2, one of the most exciting phones of the year, is available beginning today. From its 5G connectivity to its phone meets tablet flexibility, there's so much to love about this phone. You can learn more about all of these new devices and plans options at verizon.com. Also, employees on the Verizon Employee Phone Program can get exclusive offers on Samsung's latest phones starting today. Check your email for more info. Next, here's Andy with some big news. We've been spending a lot of time at home these days, and that may not be a bad thing. Times are still uncertain, and your home should remain a place that provides peace of mind. Verizon's expanding partnership with Amazon means our network is once again teaming up with the products and services that keep you connected and secure. It's what makes our Ring Alarm Security Kit with Verizon LTE a product built to secure that peace of mind. The kit comes with a 24-hour battery backup base station, keypad, Z-Wave extender, motion detector, and contact sensors for windows and doors. It's a DIY install, no wires, which allows customers to easily set things up on their own time. The Ring Alarm Security Kit connects to your Wi-Fi, but includes a cellular backup on the Verizon network just in case your home Wi-Fi goes down. For $10 a month, you're getting 24-7 professional monitoring by Ring, and Verizon customers pay the monthly fee through their existing wireless bill. Customers can manage all of their compatible devices while also having physical control via the in-home keypad. You can disarm and check the status of the security system remotely from your smartphone via the Ring mobile app or via supported Alexa-enabled devices. We're providing unique, premium content offerings and experiences for Verizon Mobile, Fios, and 5G home customers by leveraging our network. Our Amazon relationship provides all kinds of connected devices for customers, and we were the first in the world to collaborate with AWS to offer 5G network edge computing with AWS Wavelength. And this new solution means Verizon customers can continue to take advantage of even more smart home technology. Stay tuned for more details. Next up, it's happened to all of us. You're talking to a friend or reading an article about that new movie you're planning to see, and before you know it, Bam, a spoiler that you can't unhear or unread. Well, there's a way to avoid learning about these big secrets and major plot twists. A special Vanity Fair article helps readers get caught up on Disney's The Mandalorian, but it uses a dynamic way to read that puts spoiler alerts on the big details, like when the, well, you get the point. Created in partnership with Verizon, the article highlights how some Verizon wireless plans include the Disney bundle, so you can see the big moments from the best TV shows before they're spoiled. And trust me, you're gonna wanna see how the, Actually, I'll let you figure it out. Next, from Vanity Fair to Verizon and the Paley Center. Earlier this week, we announced a partnership that will grant us the exclusive streaming rights to the Paley Center's robust lineup of 2020-2021 signature events. As part of the partnership, Verizon will also serve as the official sponsor of the Paley Center programs, as well as of the Center's tribute to Hispanic achievements in television, as part of the Center's inaugural Hispanic Heritage Month celebration. Some other news from this week you may have missed. On Wednesday, Verizon became the first U.S. telecommunications 
Solutions Company to issue a second green bond. What does that mean? I caught up with Matt Ellis for a few minutes to find out. So Matt, let's let's start at the beginning. Can you share with us what exactly is a green bond? So thanks, Katie. Yeah, a green bond is is a is a uh, debt instrument like the bonds we issue, any other borrowing, but the the use of proceeds have to go towards our green activities. So the bond that we issued this week, the primary use of that, those assets is going to be to investing in renewable energy uh, to help us get to our goals of 50% uh, of our electricity usage coming from renewable energy by 2025 and our carbon neutral goal by 2035. This is an important part of how we'll meet those goals. So there are investors that want to invest in in green activities. They, that's how they'd like their money put to work. Uh, and so this gives us an opportunity to go and use those, uh, those funds that are available and use them for this uh, specific purpose. This was uh, the second green bond that we've done. We did the first one in 2019. We were the first uh, U.S. Uh, telco to issue a green bond. And, uh, you know, it's been very well received by investors. So we uh, we put most of that to work. In fact, last month we issued a report that said we had allocated all of the proceeds from that uh, uh, that first bond. So it's really exciting. This is the second one. Really great feedback from investors on how the first one went and great that uh, in just over 18 months we uh, we were able to fully uh, allocate the proceeds from that first one. So while we're very excited that this is our second green bond that we've issued, uh, there was another piece around this issuance that was very important to us. So uh, when we issue a bond, there's a, there's a set of lead underwriters. You think of the banks we work with who take the role in, 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 uh, in getting these bonds into the hands of uh, the investors. And um, typically, we have a lead set of uh, banks we work with, and then there's tiers in there. But the lead's the most important role, and typically this has been – the large banks that you think of, the uh, the Bank of America's, the J.P. Morgan's, uh, the Citibank's, et cetera. And so uh, one of the things we did in this one, because we've spent a lot of time this year talking about uh, social justice and being you know, doing more to, uh, uh, to, to, to help with social justice. And so we've certainly done a lot of talking around social justice and increasing our knowledge and education on that. We've made financial contributions, obviously, to organizations that work in this space, too. But we also said we need to see actions here as well. So what we did with this bond is uh, we've worked with diversity financial firms for a number of years, but typically they play a role at the lower level of uh, the, the banks in these roles. So we took a couple of the partners we've had great relationships with, Loop Capital and Siebert Williams, and we put them at the lead underwriting role. That meant they were getting the largest part of the fees. And being. And it's not just about the fees, but the demonstration that they can play in a lead role, that they can effectively lead an issuance like this uh, if they just get given the opportunity. We talk about ESG. Uh, so this didn't just hit the E part, the environmental with the green nature of it, but also the S part, the societal piece. So we're very glad that we've been able to demonstrate our support for uh, uh, diverse firms uh, as part of this issuance. Thanks, Matt, and congratulations to the entire team that worked on that project. We kicked off the week with some really big news, our acquisition of wireless prepaid brand TrackPhone. This acquisition will establish Verizon the track phone brands as the provider of choice in the value segment, which complements our leadership in the premium segment. When track phone customers become part of our family, they'll get the best of both worlds, more choices, better services, and new features thanks to Verizon's investment. But with the flexibility and control they have come to expect from track phones prepaid plans. On Monday, we also kicked off Hispanic Heritage Month, where Marissa Munoz, one of the leaders of our ERG Somos, joined up to speed to talk about the mission and what's going on this month. In fact, across the board, Verizon and Verizon Media ERG have joined forces, and while some may have new names, their missions remain the same. Take a look. Our employee resource groups at Verizon. And at Verizon Media Group. We're doing great things, but in different parts of the company. Now, we are making a big move. Coming together. Some names are changing but our mission is not. No matter who you are or what you do, there's a place for you. Where you can grow, learn, and connect with your fellow V-teamers. Be part of something bigger. 
Somos Verizon. The voice of the Latinx community. Pace at Verizon. Pan Asian Corporate Excellence. Bold of Verizon. Black originators, leaders, and doers. Advance of Verizon. Advocates for disability, accessibility, neurodiversity, and caregiver empowerment. Pact of Verizon. Parents and caregivers together. Prism of Verizon. Lead with pride. NAV of Verizon. Native Americans of Verizon. Valor of Verizon. Veterans and advocates leading the organization responsibly. Wave of Verizon. Women's Association of Verizon Employees. United of Verizon. Progress through unity. ERGs matter because you matter. And now more than ever, it's important that all of our employees know that they can come and be their authentic selves at Verizon. They help elevate and celebrate all the amazing diverse talents in this company. It's about representing our customers, our employees, and the world we live in today. I show up and just tell a tiny bit of my story, and people are so moved because they've never heard anybody talk about this kind of thing at work before. I'm able to be involved with so many different parts of the company and meet so many people across the business. We make sure every V-teamer is included. It gives you an opportunity to contribute to all of the ways that Verizon is looking to diversify thought and to include everyone as a part of our journey together. It's amazing that I'm able to build and help a community within the organization that I work for. We bring those things in and then we help make the company and its products better. Sign me up for two. You do not need to belong to the demographic that the ERG represents. You can be an ally, an advocate, a supporter. Join us. We need you. Ponete a nosotros. Join us. Join us. Don't just join one, join them all. Let's move the world forward together. Monday was also National Sobriety Day, and V-teamer Anthony Bodas is celebrating four years sober after struggling with drug and alcohol addiction since the age of 11. Anthony shares his story in hopes of making uncomfortable conversations more comfortable and urges anyone struggling with addiction to reach out for help. My name is Anthony Bodas. I'm a business account manager in Southwest Georgia for Verizon Business Group. I spend a lot of my free time with my girlfriend, our four dogs, and then I spend a lot of my free time giving back to my community, whether it's homelessness, drug addiction, alcoholics. I grew up in a city called Worcester, Massachusetts. I made it up to eighth grade, and that's kind of when I started to intermingle with the wrong crowd, and uh, I dropped out of school. I have since then obtained a GED, and am now working through my way of using my resources with Verizon to get into college. I started drinking at 10 years old and I used my first substance of drugs at 11. You know, and it was casual fun. It was sneaking booze at cookouts. It was sleepovers. When I turned 18 years old, I moved to South Florida to kind of get away from my problems. And so I was able to obtain a job with a corporate restaurant in Florida. But I found the same types of crowds that I was hanging out with in Massachusetts. Came the day that, you know, I no longer wanted to drink alcohol. Um, I needed alcohol. I no longer wanted to do drugs. I needed the drugs just to get by. The first set of homelessness came from really couch surfing with friends. Um, but eventually, you know, those, those friends get sick of me. I've slept on beaches. I've slept on benches. I've eaten out of dumpsters. I'd wake up every morning sick. I've drank hand sanitizer, um, rubbing alcohol just to stop the shakes so that I wouldn't get sick, so that I wouldn't go into seizures, so that I wouldn't end up hospitalized. On September 27th of 2016, I had been up for multiple days and something had just clicked in my mind and that was ask for help. I didn't want to live another day. You know, I was a complete shell of a person. I knocked on this random door at three o'clock in the morning and I told the gentleman that I needed help and to call the call 911. A officer showed up. He took me to the hospital in Indian River County. I tried to check myself out after they put some fluids in me and they told me that I wasn't going anywhere. But what had happened was at 7.30 that morning, that officer came back in plain clothes off duty and took me to detox. And that was the last time I ever had a drink or a drug. Getting into detox, it was a lot of sleeping. It was a lot of shaking. I was seeing things, but after about 10 or 11 days of just detoxing and, and getting that out of my system, I started to get back to you know, what I felt was somewhat normal. So when I got in sober, I'd realized, you know, I didn't have a bank account. I didn't have a driver's license. I didn't have a home to go home to. 
I didn't know how to use a washer or a dryer. You know, I had no self-worth, no dignity, no honor. I couldn't tell the truth to save my life, but I was just relieved that I was in a place that would allow me to start to heal and start to get better no matter how bad I wanted to drink or drug. I went back to the treatment facility. I did my 30 days. I went through counseling. I went back to that owner that I've been working for and said, hey, look, I'm sober again. Can I come back? And you know, that owner took me back immediately. That's really where my sobriety started to take off. As I came up on my first year of sobriety, a gentleman had actually come into the restaurant. At the end of it, they handed me a Verizon corporate card and he had told me that he was a district manager and he told me to go ahead and apply. And that's where I began my process of, of starting with Verizon. I was upfront and honest with my leadership just so they understood that if something seemed off with me, we could address it in private. Also to figure out what kind of resources I had within Verizon. That turning point for me right there was essentially where they had shown me that Verizon was all in for me on day one between health benefits, employee assistance program, school tuition, just all these different areas of where I could begin to better my life and utilize resources that I needed. There's a lot of wreckage in my past that I've created that I still have to work on every day and utilizing these resources to help me in times that got hard for me because life shows up. Last year, I had taken a promotion to retail the business in the Pacific Northwest and I had really thrown myself out there with three years of recovery on my Instagram where I knew leaders who I don't work for are on there. I took a huge risk, right? Because I didn't know what that was gonna do to my career moving forward. But some amazing things started to happen. People started to reach out, hey, I'm struggling. I have a family member struggling. So I felt that that post meant something, that I wasn't the only person struggling in the workplace. I've learned for me that Giving back is the most rewarding thing I could ever do. I was selfish my entire life. I've become a son again. I've become a brother again. I love myself today. I love the people around me today. It is okay to struggle. We all have our ups and downs in life, but there has to be a level of responsibility where you have to own your mistakes. You have to own your actions. You have to own your past, utilize those resources and ask for help. Thanks so much, Anthony, for sharing your story. On Tuesday, Verizon's 5G documentary, Speed of Thought, had its debut as part of TechCrunch Disrupt. And we hosted a discussion on the film as part of Up to Speed. One of the things that is so apparent in that piece is that it's our network that is the backbone of making the impossible possible. So in this week's My Why feature, let's get to know Jonathan Montenegro, who's not only helping to build our 5G network as part of the global network and technology team, but also knows how to run to a crisis. <music> My name is Jonathan Montenegro. I am currently the Senior Real Estate Manager for Florida Network, and I've been with Verizon since 2011. My team is responsible for new towers that are coming on air, as well as technology upgrades on the current towers that we have. Play with my newborn daughter and second, uh, watch soccer. Being an avid fan, I've traveled around the world just to go watch soccer games. I joined Verizon straight out of college. I never looked at Verizon as a telecommunications company. I looked at them as a technology company. Verizon as a whole has a responsibility to create the pipeline for new industries to bring them into the next wave of technology. The passion for our customers. I'm what you call a quote unquote a token millennial. So I'm very heavy into technology and that's that's my passion, provide the best network for our customers and also bringing in the new phases of, of technology. Hurricane Michael was a category five hurricane. I was responsible for leading disaster recovery and restoration efforts. Over two or three month time period, I was leading a team of 150 people going through the devastation and talking to customers and the follow up to the hurricane. We also uh, delivered a 5G network in the first 5G network in Florida, and I was a part of that. So that, I definitely, hands down, this been my greatest achievement. 5G, you're talking virtual reality, you're talking all these different applications, and then smart cities that will make everybody's life much more convenient. We're going into a, a big data era, and Verizon is gonna take the lead on that. It's 5G ultra wideband, and it's already available in parts of select cities. I, I bought after a long day, I hit the bag and feel like a new man after that. I think Verizon is a leader in our industry. Our name has always been at the top of everybody's list as far as reliability and just communications and technology as a whole. And not only that, but the, the corporate responsibility that we have as a business and what we do for society as a whole makes us a great company. Everybody here is extremely passionate in what they do on a day-to-day -day basis.
Thanks, Jonathan, for sharing your story, and congratulations on that beautiful baby girl. That's actually a perfect segue into our final news piece for today. Verizon is thrilled to have made the 2020 Working Mother Media 100 Best Companies and the 100 Best Companies for Dads, recognized for fertility and adoption benefits, as well as resources like parental leave and a parent and caregiver ERG. As working parents, this year has presented so many new and different challenges for us, and it's great to see that recognition. Well, that will wrap it up for us today. We will be back with you here on Monday with Hans talking about some of the work we're doing with the UN. With that, I will close it out with uh, my daughter who spent a lot of time with her working mom earlier this year. Until next time. You at the speed.